we've probably talked about it in biology uh, class before, but there are a lot of bacteria that are becoming resistant to antibiotics, and it's because antibiotics are being overprescribed. Um, and a lot of people go to the doctor and want to get an antibiotic and they have a cold. But as this says right here, cold viruses do not respond to antibiotics. Antibiotics are against bacteria, not viruses. So, uh, what are the treatments here in this study? What treatments are we talking about? What are the treatments? Yes. Okay, the kits. Okay. The cold medicine kit. They're not being given antibiotics. They're given a cold medicine kit. Well, they're also given a prescription for antibiotics. Um, but they're given a cold medicine kit um, or not. So what is the response variable? What are we trying to measure? Yeah. How many people fill their prescription? Um, Okay, whether they actually fill their prescription or not is the response variable. We're not trying to measure how long does their cold last, <coughs> um, does their cold go away, whatever. We're trying to figure out does receiving this kit prevent them from filling their antibiotic. So in question two, they're pretty much telling you this is not a well-designed experiment. Okay, this is not a well-designed experiment. Did y'all come up with some of the reasons as to why it is not a well-designed experiment? We've got three characteristics. We've got random assignment, a sufficient number of subjects, and a comparison or a control group. Okay, let's start at the bottom. Do we have a comparison or a control group? Yes. Five clinics were given the kit, uh, kits. Five other clinics uh, we're not given the uh, kits. So we've got a comparison or co control group. Do we have a sufficient number of subjects? Yeah, we have 11,000 patients. I would say 11,000 is probably a sufficient number. So the last uh, reason that we have is random assignment. So are we missing random assignment? Well, yes, because that's our only choice. They said that it's not a well-designed experiment. We said the other two characteristics were satisfied. So that's our only choice we left. But why is this not random assignment? Yeah. People have a choice where to go. Five clinics um, over here were giving kits. Five clinics over here were not giving uh, kits. So... That could be a working variable, where these clinics are. This population of people could be more likely uh, to be open to other treatments instead of just automatically thinking that they have to get a prescription. And this population over here may think, well, that's the only thing that's going to help me. The doctor prescribed this prescription. This is the only thing that helps me. Uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, you're, you're looking at a lurking variable of just the population of people in this neighborhood versus this other neighborhood. So what do you, what do you think, if, if we didn't really change anything, if we still use these five medical clinics over here and these five medical clinics over here, how could we fix this experiment? How could we fix it? <clears throat> okay. If within the 10 clinics that we have, instead of saying these five, all these patients get it, and these five, none of these patients get it, randomly give it to patients within all 10 clinics, that would fix it. That would give us that randomization, um, is if we just randomly assigned it to patients in all 10 clinics. Okay. I'm not going to lie, this is kind of a difficult thing for me to teach. I'm trying to talk you through it. Um, you really just kind of have to start thinking in terms of these three characteristics and look for issues. We 
you, you kind of have to look for what the problem is. Uh, it's not always going to necessarily jump right out at you. Okay, okay do we have our three characteristics of a well-designed experiment? Yes, we certainly do. It is random. It is a sufficient number of subjects, and we do have a comparison group. Okay, this study was double blind. Can anybody explain how they could have made this subject blind and evaluator blind? Yeah, I mean, both of them don't know. So they probably had like a barcode or something like that um, on the products uh, so that on the So yeah, they explained they explained in here uh, how the subjects were blind. It says that half of them were given the antibacterial products, the other half, the, the products were identically packaged, but it was missing the ingredient. So that's how they were blind. They didn't know whether theirs had the ingredient or not. Uh, and then the evaluator also didn't know. The, the, uh, the product looked the same, so the evaluator didn't know which one was which somebody somewhere that wasn't uh, involved in the actual data collection had a list of which ones had the product or had the uh, ingredient and which one had not. Okay, part three says instead of assigning the treatments at random to the households, the researchers simply compared the frequency of infectious disease symptoms over a year in households that use antibacterial products and those that do not. So what kind of working variables did y'all come up? With there. What could be the problem with just taking data on households that use antibacterial products? If we're trying to measure whether there's more disease in their house or not. Yes. That's a good one. And they'll probably go to the doctor more. They're probably healthier in general. I'm sorry? Yeah. Yeah, it probably will be a very obvious outcome. If they use these products, then there's probably not going to be very much um, disease. So, um, yeah, just think about the other, think about characteristics of people that use antibacterial products. They're probably cleaner in general. They probably take care of themselves more. They probably have a healthier diet and that sort of thing. Um, so those are some lurking variables that would mess up their conclusion. Okay, the treatments. I already gave it up here, but I think y'all should uh, got it. Taking AP classes or not. Your response variable is whether you graduate college in five years or less. So do you think that this came from a well-designed experiment? Can you couple heads saying no? What do you think we're missing? Do we have a sufficient number of subjects? Yes, we're good. We got plenty of numbers. Uh, do we have a comparison and control group? Yes. Do we have random assignment? No. How do you randomly assign taking AP courses? You can't just go through the school population and say, you're going to take an AP class, you're not going to take an AP class. You're going to take an AP class, you're not going to take an AP class. You can't do that. Um, so we're missing the random assignment. Did anybody come up with a lurking uh, variable that could explain something? Yeah? What is it? Yeah. Your more, your more bright students, or however you want to say it, are the ones that are going to take AP classes. So it's probably more likely anyways that they're going to graduate college on time. Right? Because they're smarter, they shouldn't be failing college classes, so they should get it done in time. Um, so it's not necessarily the fact that they took AP. Um, I don't think they, the AP class itself has anything to do with their performance in college. It's more to do with how they are as a person. Um, so, do you think that it's possible to design an experiment? to truly measure this? I don't think so, because I mean, you're, you're never really truly going to be able to come up with that random assignment 
without like you know breaking some ethics laws or something you know saying you have to take this class you're not going to take the class I mean, it's just I, I don't think that it's truly possible so this is why we're talking about this stuff because yeah it may seem that there's not like a lot of math to it and there's really not it's the logic part of it logic falls within our math world uh, but y'all need to be aware of this when you're reading uh, stories, you know, if you're scrolling through Twitter, you're scrolling through whatever, and you see a, a story with a headline like this, it may be, you know, they, people purposefully write headlines, they purposefully design studies, it's not ethical, but sometimes they purposefully design studies to make it look like uh, something that they believe is true, and in this case, they're trying to make an argument to, uh, I guess, try and encourage more kids to take AP and IB classes. And so they're saying, well, even if you fail the AP exam, you're still going to do better in college. And they're trying to use the, this study to prove that. And the numbers, the numbers agree with that. But it goes back to the design of the experiment. You have to have those three characteristics of a well-designed experiment or your conclusions are not valid. Uh, so you guys need to be aware of stuff like that. You need to think when, or when you hear a story on the news, I know you all don't watch the news now, but eventually you will, because you'll care. Um, but they have headlines like this all the time. You know, it sounds great, but you gotta ask yourself, well, how did they actually come up with that? How did they design that experiment uh, to decide whether those results really truly are valid or not? Or you're gonna be believing a lot of stuff that's not necessarily valid. Okay. All right. Last one to two because obviously we're not teaching any new tests. Uh, not that I love giving tests, but anyways. <laughs> treatments. What are our treatments here? Okay. Harder questions first or easy ones first? Um, what's the response variable? What is he trying to uh, measure? Yeah, see which, which test gives the better results, okay? If they have the same questions, they're just in different orders. So do we have the three characteristics of a well-designed experiment? No, what are we missing? Randomization. Randomization, okay? You can't give it to an entire group in first period and an entire group in second period. Are we missing anything else? We don't get as many numbers, it probably would be a good idea to involve a couple other classes. What if these first periods only have like 15 kids in it? Okay, uh, it would probably be a good idea to give it to like another class as well, um, or another teacher's class. That would help. Um, but we do, we do have the one. We do have a comparison group. Uh, it's not a very good comparison group, but we do have. Uh, is it subject blind? Probably. Unless he tells the kids ahead of time, which I don't think that he did, because that would kind of be defeating the purpose. Uh, so yes, it is study subject one. Is it evaluated one? No, he knows. He's the one giving the test. He knows that he gave first period this test and second period this test. Uh, so we've got subject one, but not evaluated one. So it's not double blind. What could be a lurking variable? What could explain? Uh, it doesn't tell us what the results are, but let's say that uh, first period, the one with the easier questions first, let's say first period did better than second period. What could be a lurking there? Could just be a better class in general. They could just do better on all their tests. Uh, anything else? Y'all can think of. Some students don't necessarily start at the very beginning of the test. Some of them just skip around. So it doesn't really matter what they put first. Um, what about you guys? If I had y'all in second period, do you think you would do better than having it right now in first period? Probably not. Probably not. Some of you say yes, some of you say no. Why why do you say why do some people say yes? Probably more awake during second period. Some of y'all don't even get here on time, so you probably roll out of bed at like 7.30. And so you've been awake for all of like 15 minutes when I get you to start the test. So you probably...